Hey guys, Chris here. In this video, we are doing the Norwegian High Speed Run version 2.0 in the Tesla Model Y performance. So if you're new here, thank you so much for stopping by, but you may be thinking, hey Chris, what the heck is the Norwegian High Speed Run? I've never seen any of your videos before. Can you please explain? Yes, I can. So the Norwegian High Speed Run is a test over route that is 610 kilometers. That's a little more than 400 miles if my math is correct. And the point of the test is to simulate going on a longer trip with an electric car where you exceed the range of the car. So the average speed on this test is around 95, 96 kilometers an hour, about 60 miles per hour. So we will without a doubt be exceeding the range of this uh, Tesla Model Y, which has a WLTP rated range of 613 kilometers. But because we're going at that speed, we're probably maybe going to be able to go 350, 400 kilometers before we have to stop and charge. So st charting strategy, how deep into the battery percentage do we go before we stop and charge? Because if we charge too early, we'll maybe have to stop and charge twice, you know? And also, if we stop too early, we have 20, 30% battery, we won't get as fast charging speed if we go a little bit further and charge you know, at 10%, 5%. Sometimes I even stop at 0%. I really try to push these cars. And when we go that deep into the charge, it's interesting to see what happens. Does the car complete go into panic mode, turtle mode, and stuff like that. So we'll be most likely exploring some of that today. And then once we get back here, we're going to be ranking the car, putting it into a list, and ranking it according to how much time it had to spend charging to complete the whole test. And keen viewers may think, well, Chris, that's not how you do the Norwegian High Speed Run. Well, this is the version 2.0, and we have a few changes. So first off, we're ranking the cars according to charging time instead of the total time, because I think that is more precise, that is more fair and more relevant. Because before we had factors like traffic, uh, it could, you know, uh, give 15, 20, 30 minutes of more time on the total clock uh, without really representing, because that was because of traffic. Now, with the only thing being when we're connected to the charger and timing that, this will be more representative and you know uh, take away those factors that we really can't control. And also for the very first time, we have a new sponsor on the channel, which is Recharge. And that's why we are at a new charging uh, or starting point, which is here at SON Billing Data. We're still going down to the train station in Kistansan and then back again. So it's pretty much the same route, but it is five kilometers shorter. It's 610 versus 615 kilometers. And Recharge, they are an awesome partner to have here on the channel now. So I'm really proud to be working with them because they are the largest provider of lightning fast, rapid, and also AC charging, just charging in general in the Nordic countries with more than like 4,000 charging points. It's completely insane. They are everywhere in Norway, Sweden, and Finland, and they will be opening charters in Denmark in the near future, if I'm not mistaken. So that is the lengthy intro, guys. I do apologize, but we do have a new sponsor. We have a new route, and I want to try to explain the Norwegian high speed run as you know, good as possible for, for new viewers. So we're now currently at 98% state of charge. We're going to go to 100, then disconnect, and then I'll see you guys on the road. are now on the move and we've been on the road for about an hour. We're now passing Sonnefjord and then we're going to pass Lodvig and then we're going to start heading southwest. We're now just heading uh, straight south and on our way down to this point we've had a tailwind of about three meters per second and I think that's been very good for consumption. So take just take a look at the navigation here. We've navigated to the train station in Kristiansand, which is our turnaround point, and the car's estimating we're gonna ride there with 29% battery. When we started, that estimate was estimate was 20%, and then it went up to like 33, but now it's down to 29%. And this is what is a little bit hard, uh, you know, calculating how much we're going to have to charge to, because we have a tailwind on our way down, and that means the consumption is gonna be lower, uh, till our turnoff point and then higher on the way back. So that's always a little bit hard to calculate. Um, but yeah, I mean, 29% is still pretty, pretty nice. That means we're gonna be able to go pretty far in the opposite direction before we have to stop and charge. So 
initially I thought we were going to stop at you know the uh, Tesla superchargers at the Lille Lille at the Circle K station where we also have the Ionity chargers but I think we're going to be able to go further maybe if we're lucky we can go to the recharge chargers in um, Bambla which I wanted to try last time they are new but they only have 200 and 150 kilowatts I think the the peak speed and I'm a little bit unsure if this car peaks at 150 or 250 kilowatts uh, I'm not sure I want to find that out but okay let's take a look at the consumption and that is two all or trip a we've covered 105 kilometers total energy consumption is 20 kilowatt hours and then average consumption is 19.4 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers or 194 watt hours per kilometer in Tesla speak so consumption is, is, is pretty nice it's pretty low but that is the question how much does this tail tailwind affect you know the consumption in a positive manner how much will the consumption rise once we head uh, you know in the opposite direction and as you guys can see it is a little bit warmer now it is nine degrees uh, celsius according to the car we started with seven degrees celsius and hopefully it's going to just stay you know nice and dry with the weather like this and also if you saw my motorway range test yesterday guys i was cussing for the two hours off camera because we had like 30 instances of phantom braking on that route but here after an hour we have n not even one instance of phantom braking so that seems to be a very local phenomenon a phenomenon F phenomenon Ph my god i can't even pronounce that word phenomenon phenomenon that be it seems to be very a local phenomenon uh if you're tesla does phantom braking. Phantom braking, for people who don't know what that is, you're driving here with the cruise control, you're on autopilot, you're just chilling, and then the, suddenly the car just hits on the brakes for some reason. Sometimes it's because it reads the speed limit wrongly. Uh, sometimes it just d does it with no explanation. So that is phantom braking. We haven't had one episode of that thus far on this 105 kilometer trip uh, which is uh, the the distance uh, we've we've done uh, thus far okay so that is a little bit of an update a uh, little bit of uh, different uh, things we've uh, covered there so we're gonna head on now and i'll probably not update you guys before we get down to the train station in kishansan which is in uh, around two hours Welcome to Kristiansson guys and again if you are new here I really appreciate you guys for stopping by and uh, well please be sure to browse the channel if this is your first time your second your tenth time and if you like EV content hit that subscribe button I would really appreciate that it really does help the channel out a lot and also give this video a thumbs up if you like EVs and range tests and Teslas so we are in Kristiansand, which is like the fifth biggest city, fourth or fifth biggest city in Norway. Oslo, Bergen, Trondheim, Stavanger, yeah, fifth biggest, I think, uh, with like 115,000 inhabitants. It's like the summer capital of Norway. People travel here in the summer, you know, they have beaches, they have restaurants and promenades. They also have a zoo with an amusement park is a really popular destination in summer. So we're gonna take a right here into the train station because I wanna stop and take a look at the consumption also and also plan where we're gonna stop next time. The past few times we've only done a U-turn here. Again, it really doesn't matter anymore uh, if we go in here or if we take a U-turn because we're not timing the actual trip. Um, so we're not that time sensitive. So we're gonna take a right in here and I haven't, you know, been here in a little while you can also see uh, in the distance there that is color line a boat that goes to Denmark like uh, it takes like I don't know three or four hours uh, it's a ferry so you can travel uh, across to Denmark if you want to go well further south in Europe people also just do it for a day trip because they can go yeah tax-free on the boat and drink and eat and buy buy stuff cheaply so let's just stop here very very quickly um and take a look at the consumption so we're here with 24 percent battery and here also guys before in the teslas i drove i haven't driven a tesla in probably almost a year you could like swipe right or left here or up or down and then you could have like your board computer here giving you you know trip information is that a setting that is gone i wasn't able to find anything but 
also the system here just seems to be updated since I last drove it. So you have to go into car hair, this is the Norwegian, yes. And then you have to go to Iraisid, which is trips. And then our trip A is our, our reset board computer. So we covered 303 kilometers according to car. We've used 55 kilowatt hours of energy and average consumption consumption 18.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers which is pretty darn good and that is not bad at all but what we're going to do now is that we have 24 uh, percent battery left and when i passed the recharge chargers in tvedestran uh shell tvedestran if we are able to manage pretty much the same consumption on our way back we're gonna be able to arrive there with a few percent. So let's see what the car says. Uh, which one of, is, is this one, right? This is one that's along the road. And the car is saying we have to stop and charge for 15 minutes. And it also wants to preheat the battery. We don't wanna do that because that's gonna, you know, raise the consumption. So I think we're gonna just try to go there. Uh, and then I'll just monitor you know, the range and all of that on our way. So we're just gonna go now, uh, go back out on the main road and I'll update you guys once I find out how far we're gonna be able to go. So maybe we're gonna do the Ionity or uh, the Tesla superchargers in Lillesand, but I think we're gonna try to YOLO it and go to uh, Shell in Tvedestran to the recharge chargers. Check it out guys, we made it to Shell Tvedestran, which is our next exit here, exit 67. And according to the car, we're gonna arrive there with 1% battery. Um, it was kind of uh, a bit scary, but once I, you know, just uh, canceled the navigation on the car, because I wasn't able to remove that supercharging stop uh, from the navigation, I just, I just chose to navigate with my phone on, on Google Maps instead and I just monitored instead of you know uh, showing percentage I changed that setting to showing uh, you know a range or kilometers and once you just you know monitored the difference that we had a steady you know uh, buffer between what the car was saying we had in range and what the phone was saying we had left in distance I knew we were gonna make it but that's also a little bit annoying here with the model Y and, and Tesla this uh, version of the infotainment system is that you can't show both range and battery percentage which is a bit annoying you may not be needing it other than when i do these tests where it is a bit extreme i mean normal people would probably just go to a charger where the car would recommend but the car's going to recommend a supercharger here in norway most if not all superchargers are now open uh, to other manufacturers so and especially in norway check out this guys they have like i think they have 14 uh, 150 kilowatt chargers here, it's completely insane. So here, at least here in Norway, you you know, you're not uh, reliant on the supercharger network. You can go to other chargers. So we're gonna hop in here. We're gonna connect to this 150 kilowatt. And as I said, we're at 1%. Let's just do a quick update on the, um, where do we have it here? On the trip, oh, yeah. A little bit higher consumption, 186 watt hours per kilometer 18.6 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers and we cover 387 kilometers in total i've been charging for a little while now it's nice to take a break after around four hours on the road almost 400 kilometers i gone into the station gone to the toilet and bought something to drink but i just want to show you guys that these camp power chargers they are really nice because these here aren't the actual chargers uh, these are only the dispensers so you can see in the background there, you have uh, some Camp Power uh, labeled uh, boxes over there. You have a few over to the right, and then you have the actual power station uh, covered in wood over there. So these are really nice. They have four of them there and then four here, so eight. And then you, they have like, I don't know, is that eight over there? So like 16. And then they have more room for another 
8 over here, yeah, this charging station can can potentially become pretty insane. But also it's really cool that you can scan the actual uh, charging screen. There's a QR code there and you can follow the charging. So me who I use, you know, a, a chip to charge at the recharge chargers. But one thing you can't see is how long you've been charging, which is a little bit annoying. And the car also doesn't tell me how much I've been charging. So hopefully we'll get that information at the end of the charging session. Once it's stopped, we will get the total time. But as you guys can see here, we're only charging at 115 kilowatts. So that may have been a little bit of a fail from my part because I was hoping that we could get 150 kilowatts, but what I'm guessing since it's only like nine degrees Celsius outside that uh, we drained the battery of pretty much a lot of its heat going down to 1%. If we went to a supercharger, it would you know automatically preheat the battery. We probably would have gotten 150 kilowatts, but if we can keep this charging speed uh, like to 50, 60%, we may be able to uh, still, you know, get out of it uh, pretty nicely but this may affect the actual charging time so again guys charging strategy is a big part of the trip and is it a blunder well we won't know before the end of uh, the trip once we get back but what we can do is that we can uh, go into the navigation here and then we can find our um, the actual uh, so uh, our, our endpoint so so uh, Billing, billing, stafletta. There's a S and what the car says here. Uh, we're gonna try to follow this. It says if we leave now, we're going to have to stop and charge 20 minutes at a uh, another supercharger. So if we charge for 15 minutes here or 20 minutes here, another 20 minutes, that will be fine. Uh, but what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna charge until the car says we can get to our destination without that supercharger stop so it says charging what does it say here no it won't actually give us our information if we cancel that again and then we do this will it show us um it wants us to charge for 20 minutes but it doesn't tell us how many percent it wants us to charge. So we'll just have to wait until the navigation system shows that we're gonna be able to get to our destination without that charging stop. Welcome back to ESO in Billing Sarsleta, where we started this test earlier today, and it's completely pitch black dark now outside, guys. I forget how quickly it becomes dark once we get into, you know, October and November here in Norway, because the summer is so, so bright till so late in the evening, and then suddenly everything just switches so quickly. And we're now connected to a camp power charger on the front side of the station here. They have six of these 150 kilowatt chargers, which is really nice. Earlier today, we started on the back side where they have two uh, Alpatronic hyperchargers, which are 225 kilowatts each. But before I give you guys the results and the numbers, I just want to give a huge thanks to Marcus Biel for lending me this Tesla Model Y Performance to do this test. I also did the motorway range test, so if you want to check that video out, that was my last video. And also the next video will be my full review of this car. So if you don't want to miss that out, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and sound that notification bell. But okay, you guys are here at the end of the video because you want to know the results. So we arrived here with 7% stated charge. At our charging stop, we charged to 65%. And as I said, it was pretty hard to do the calculations because even though I charged to 65%, the car wanted to do a stop at a supercharger on the way but my calculations show that we would be able to arrive but we could be a little bit more efficient we could have charged to maybe only 60 percent and then arrive here with two percent but again going against that uh, headwind is really hard to 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 calculate so average consumption today ended at 18.9 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers which again 
not bad considering the size of the vehicle. This is the performance version. And also it was quite cold today between four and 10 degrees Celsius. So not bad considering this size of car, actually quite efficient for being this type of vehicle. But okay guys, you are here at the end of the video to know the total charging time. So the Tesla Model Y performance charged today over a route that is 610 kilometers with an average speed of around 95 kilometers an hour for a total time of 31 minutes. And you guys can see it puts this car, you know, mid table and it is qu a quite good result, you know, especially considering, you know, the colder temperature we had today. Yes, the weather was nice. Uh, wind uh, conditions also not too bad, two to three meters of, of wind per, per second. But we maybe could have done a little bit better if I did go to a supercharger for two reasons. So first off, we could have connected there with maybe around 20 to 24 percent stated charge and then the battery would have preheated. We got, possibly would have gotten that 250 kilowatt peak charging speed if there was a V3 charger available. Usually when I go to that charging station at Ionity, all of the Tesla chargers and especially the V3 ones are the ones that are occupied so it's not a guarantee but if we would have connected to that v3 charger and gotten you know 250 kilowatts which this car should get up to around 30 percent and then it really starts to dip we possibly would have been able to charge maybe for only 20 minutes today but that goes to show you guys that you know a tesla is really at its most efficient while going to a supercharger because we went to a 150 kilowatt charger, but we didn't get 150 kilowatt, we peaked at 118. And that is because, you know, to make this car so efficient, it drains a lot of the heat out of the battery and pumps that into the cabin, especially when it's, you know, a little bit colder as it was today. So going down to 1%, we were really depleting all of that heat out of the battery. And then once we connected to that charger, meant that we, wasn't get, we weren't getting that speed. But if we went to a supercharger, we wouldn't be able to go that far, but we would have gotten higher speed and yeah, shorter charging time. So, I mean, it's, it, it is give and take. It, it shows me, me that it's a long time since I've driven a Tesla. You have to think a little bit differently because of where it can preheat and you know how, how much heat this gets out of the battery. I don't experience that with any other EVs, but still guys, 31 minutes, is a really good time and if you really want me to redo this test i'll try to borrow this car this car is probably going going out for sale uh quickly at marcus Beal. but once he gets a model y performance again i'll ask him if i can get one and test one but it may be colder so yeah we'll have to see but guys i hope you enjoyed today's video if you did please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content as always please subscribe see you guys later and goodbye